Hey everyone, Stefan Superfloof here. In today's part two of our three-part employee recognition app, we're going to take an out-of-the-box dropdown and convert it to checkboxes that are required. I'll put the link to the first video in the description below. Make sure you hit and subscribe so you get notified about part three. Let's get started. Here's where we left off the app last time with a standard dropdown. I'm holding the Alt key down so I can preview the app. And as you can see, I can select multiple items here. The client, however, requested that we have a different functionality. They preferred checkboxes here. Now there's two ways that we can handle a checkbox. We could manually put checkboxes in here and put the text of the values in here, but I'm a lazy admin. If we go back to our data source and click on edit data, this will take us to our list. And if we look at the options here in the column settings, any time that somebody comes in and updates these column choices, we would have to manually go into the Power App and add those checkboxes. Let's not do that. Instead, let's make this a dynamic set of checkboxes. And to do that, we're going to leverage a gallery. So first, I'm going to go back into our tree view, and I'm going to click Insert a Gallery. I'm going to insert a horizontal gallery, but I'm going to do a blank one. Now when I insert a gallery, it adds it just to the app. Now what we want to do though is have that as part of the data card. So I'm going to first rename the gallery following best practices. I'm going to call it Gal Props. And then once that refreshes, I'm going to cut the gallery, select anything within the data card, and hit paste, control V on the keyboard. Now the gallery is part of the data card first steps. Now let's make it a little bit smaller. It's huge and we don't need that much real estate. Now within the gallery, I'm going to click the pencil and from here I'm going to insert a checkbox. Now we're getting somewhere. Make this a little bit smaller so we have more options. Now if we click on the drop down itself, we want to copy the items from here, and we want to place that within the gal props items. So we're going to go back to the gallery. We could, if this hadn't been selected, select items. And here we're going to paste in the choices. Now you see nothing visually changed. That's because here within the option, we need to change the text. So I'm going to select the checkbox, go into the text field, and instead of having it just be standard text, which we could have manually put in here, I'm going to instead do this item dot value, and that'll give us every item in the gallery. I'll make this a little bit bigger, and you see how it's still getting cut off. I'll fix that in a minute. Now we don't need the data card anymore, so I'm going to or the data card, the drop down. So I'm going to hit select that one and press delete on the keyboard. Now you'll notice that we got a couple errors here. Let's look at those. So if I click on the error and click edit in the data card, or edit in the formula bar, it's giving me an error on the update statement. For right now, I'm going to just delete that. We'll, we'll deal with it in a minute. And then select the second one. Now this error is referencing where the error message is dynamically placed. So instead of having it be the dropdown that we deleted, we're going to change it to the gallery. So I start typing gal props and replace it there. Now I can copy and paste. I took a minute to clean up the spacing on the gallery and now we can see all five of our options. What we need to do next is handle how we collect the data. If I click on the checkbox within the gallery and I come over here to advanced properties, we have an on check and an on uncheck property. So here what we're going to do is when someone clicks a checkbox, we're going to collect a collection. We're going to take those values and put them into a container. I'm going to call this call props because I'm not very imaginative. And what are we putting in that collection? We're putting everything with this item. Now in the converse of this, when someone unchecks a box, we want to remove it from that collection. So I'm going to copy and paste and change collect to remove. Now this is one of the fun things about Power Apps right now is Microsoft's making changes all the time. Let's test this and see what happens. If I select New Perspective and Innovation, it used to be that you would come up here to the ribbon to see the variables. 
Now it's in the tree view. We come over here and hover over this icon, and you'll see it's called Variables. And if I expand that out, you see I have a collection called Call Props with two rows. Now let's play the app, and let's add Extra Mile. I'm going to come back out of the app, and you see here now we have three rows. Go back in and play the app again, and let's remove everything. Go back and look at our collection, and now we have zero rows. That's great, but how do we pass that data to SharePoint? That's the whole goal of this, right? So we select on the data card, and what do we want to do? We want to update the data card with the collection that we just created. So I'm going to put call props in there, and there you have it. We have the basic functionality. I like to trust but verify, so let's make sure that our data is getting to SharePoint. We'll play the app, and I'm going to select a colleague. Let's grab Tony. Grab a couple of options here. Let's grab these three, enter some text, hit submit. That takes us to our success screen, and if we hit X here, it takes us back to the main screen so we could submit another one if we wanted. Click X here. You'll notice that the three checkboxes are still selected. We're going to fix that in a minute. We also, if we come here to variables, notice that our collection still has data in it too, so we have to do a little bit of cleanup. How we're going to handle that is back on the main screen, we're going to go to the on visible property, and from here we're going to clear the props collection. Now why we're doing that is because whenever this screen comes up, we don't want to have any records still sitting there. We need to do the same thing with the checkboxes. If I select the checkbox and come to advanced properties, you'll see that down here we have an option called reset. Right now it's set to false, but we want to use that. So I'm going to select in here and remove false, and I'm going to use a variable. Now, following best practice, I'm going to name it something that's relatable and that's something that if a colleague were to come in after me and work on the app, they'd be able to know what I was talking about. So I'm going to set it var checkboxes reset. Now you'll see that I'm getting an error, and why that is is because we're leveraging a variable but we haven't defined it yet. So we want to go back to the main screen and the on visible property we're going to leverage again. I'm going to select here and drag down and give myself a little more space. I'm going to enter a semicolon for the next line of code, and I'm going to set that variable. I'm going to set it to false. Now, what we want to do here, though, is when the screen is visible, we set that to false. But when it reloads, we want to toggle it again. So we're going to take that bit of code, copy it, set it to true, if I could spell, and then again set it to false. Now, I want you to look at one thing here. We have a nice button called Format Text. Please leverage this. It takes your code and makes it readable. We can also remove formatting and have it back to how it was, but this is generally easier for people to read. Please, make your coworkers' lives easier. They'll want to help you more. So now, let's play the app again. I'm going to uncheck these boxes, select a colleague, Tony, Let's grab all five options, enter an action, and hit submit. We go back to the success screen, I hit the X, and we're back to our main screen. Let's go back to our data set, refresh. We have all five options in there, and if we look here, our collection is clear. The next thing we want to handle is the required fields. You'll notice that if I hit submit, these guys turn red. Let's play the app, and as you can see here, as you enter things, the error message automatically clears. We want to do the same here. That's what we'll handle next. In a form, if you have fields set as required and hit the submit button, you not only get an error message, but you also get colors on the fields, letting people know where they missed the information. So if I enter something in here, you'll notice the color changed from red and the error message went away dynamically. That's what we want to have working now in our checkboxes. So close out of this. We're going to go to the submit button. Now before we submit the form, we want to add a variable in here and use that variable for the logic to give us the color and the visibility that we're looking for. So we're going to add in here if is empty. Now we have to use is empty because we're using the collection props. So what this is saying is if the user has not put anything into that collection, we want to set a variable. So we're going to set var error to true. <clears throat> 
And if it isn't, we're going to set it to false. Close that, close the statement and give us a semicolon. So now, if we hit submit and call props isn't filled out, it'll set our variable to true. Now we're gonna use that variable for the error message as well as the color. So what we're gonna do here is go to the error message and we're gonna remove the default entry in here and we're going to put var error. So if var error is true, then show the message. But we also, and call props, whoops, and is empty, <clears throat> call props. So now we are covering both our bases. If someone hits submit and there's nothing there and props is empty, then show that very, the error message. So if I hit submit now, you see the error message pops up. We're gonna use that error message to give us the coloring here that we're looking for. So if we select the checkbox, we come to advanced, we have color and checkbox border color. We're gonna select color, come up here and cut out the value. So what we're gonna do here is say if <clears throat> um, error message two, which is the error message for this card, if it's visible, sorry, I coughed and nobody wants to listen to that. So if the error message is visible, then we want to make the text red. It used to be that you could just type in red. Microsoft has made a change, so now we have to do color.red. And if it's not, paste in the RGB that was there before. So now we're starting to get there. We can take this same code and enter it in the checkbox color as well, take out what's in there. Now, as we enter things, you'll see the error message goes away and the text color changes exactly the functionality that we wanted. But wait, there's more. Hit subscribe below so that you get notified when we go into part three of our employee recognition app. Part three leverages Power Automate or Flow to create emails notifying the end user of their nomination. As you can see from my screen here, we have different colors as well as different graphics depending on what the people select for the props. We'll get into all of the conditional logic, how to embed images, and use HTML for the email formatting. Again, hit subscribe. Part three is coming soon.